In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to make a cardstock project that is bigger than this mat. If you're new here, my name is Nisha. Welcome to Little Craft Nest. And if you're interested in crafting and Cricut tutorials, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Today, I am going to be making a giant kangaroo crossing sign. Now, you may have no use at all for a kangaroo crossing sign, but that's okay because the method we are using will apply to any giant cardstock project that you are making. So you may be wondering, why are you making a big kangaroo sign? Well, our church is putting on a vacation Bible camp and we are doing an Australian Outback theme. And so that is why I am making a big kangaroo sign, but you can make whatever you wanna make. Some items you're gonna need for a large cardstock project are a large 12 by 24 inch mat. Now you can use your 12 by 12 inch mat, but there'll be a lot more steps involved then. So I highly suggest getting a big mat for those big projects. You're also going to need some cardstock, depending on what colors your image are. You may need a variety of colors. You may need only one or two or three. So it's really up to you. I'm going to be using black cardstock today. I was hoping to use some yellow cardstock as well, but I ran out of yellow card stock and I need to get this project done. So I am using yellow bristol board or poster board. So you can use that as well. You're just going to have to cut it down to size. You're also going to need a big piece of cardboard. So I've got a big piece of cardboard here. This is going to hold our project all together. So if you recently bought a fridge or a barbecue or something that came in a large cardboard box, Save that cardboard box, it may come in handy for those large crafting projects. Some other supplies you may wanna have on hand are glue, tape, a ruler, a brayer, and I think that's about it. So let's jump onto Design Space and get started. So like I said, I'm making a kangaroo crossing sign, but you can make whatever you want. The process for doing larger than that projects will be the same. The first thing we need to do is create our design. So I'm going to grab a square for the background of our sign, and I'm going to do the one with the curved edges here. And I want my sign to be about 20 inches, so I'm going to go to the top under size, and we're going to resize this to 20. And as you can see, this is huge, and we got our warning symbol on the right-hand panel saying this image is too big for our machine to cut. But that is okay, I'm going to show you what to do. So first let's zoom out at the bottom left-hand corner so we can see our large image. And I'm going to change the color here. Our background is going to be yellow, just so we get a better idea of what our sign is going to look like. And now I want another square to go inside. So this time I'm going to grab the square with the pointed edges and I'm going to stretch this out. And I think that looks pretty good. I'm actually going to move this to the side for a second so that I can work with this separately from my yellow square. So I'm just going to scooch over here. So I wanna create an offset for the square and I'm going to show you why in a minute. So I'm going to select my square, go up to offset. And this time I don't want my corners rounded, I want them squared. So under corners, I'm just going to select the pointed corner here. And then my offset right now, it's set at 0.389, which looks pretty good to me, so I'm going to press apply. And so now I have three squares here. I've got our yellow one, our gray one, and our black one. So I'm going to select both my black and gray square just by dragging my mouse over both of them. They're both selected. And now I'm going to go down to the bottom right and press slice. Now you can see in the right-hand column that that has created an extra layer, and that extra layer is what we want. So if I drag this, this is the box that I want here, and we can get rid of this gray square, and we can delete our black square. So let's go back over to our yellow square here. So now I have our black outline and our yellow square. Now I wanna line these two squares up for a minute, so I'm going to select both of them, and I'm going to go to a line and we're just going to center those. Now I want this to look a little more like a road sign, so I'm going to rotate this. So let's go up to rotate and I'm going to change the angle to a 45 degree angle and press enter. And now it's looking a little difficult to see our sign again, so I'm going to zoom out again so we get a better idea here. I am zoomed out to 25%, but that is okay. So now I wanna get a kangaroo to put in the center here. So I'm going to go over to images on the left-hand side. I'm going to type in kangaroo. 
And I have a free kangaroo available right here. So I'm going to select that kangaroo and press add to canvas. Now let's zoom back out again because we're at 100%. And here is our kangaroo, but I do want this to be a black silhouette. So what I'm going to do is go down to the bottom right hand corner and I'm just going to weld all these kangaroo layers together. So I'm just going to click on weld. And now I just have a kangaroo silhouette, which is perfect, but I want my kangaroo to be black. So I'm going to go up to the top and change the color to black. And now we have a pretty neat looking kangaroo here and we can just size him inside of our sign. And I think that looks pretty awesome. I'm loving the look of this sign. So let's go ahead now and figure out how we are going to get our Cricut to cut out this sign. If we go over to our layers panel, we've got a warning symbol for each layer here. And if you click on that warning symbol, it says, our image is too large and we gotta make it smaller. So I'm going to show you how to do that. Let's go over to the left-hand side and we are going to select a square again. I'm going to grab the one with the pointed edges. And the maximum size that we can cut out on our Cricut machines is 11.5 by 23.5. So I'm going to change the size up at the top to 11.5 and we are going to unlock it. So in between the width and the height here, you'll see a little lock box. We're going to click on that so we can adjust the size of our square and turn it into a rectangle. And so we're going to change the height here to 23.5. And if you look over on our layers panel, we do not have a warning symbol for our square here. Now, before I start altering our image here, what I like to do is duplicate it just so I have another copy if I ever wanna go back and make some changes. So I'm going to select the three layers on my sign here. I'm going to group those all together at the top and then I'm going to press duplicate. Now I don't need to use this duplication at all for this project. So I'm just going to hide it here. This is just so if I need to go back and make changes, I can easily do that with the copy that I have saved over on the side. Now, since we have three different layers here, I want to slice them all out separately. We're not going to do it all at once. So I'm going to go back to the top and ungroup those layers. I'm going to move my kangaroo over to the side. I'm going to move my black square over to the side. And I'm going to start by working with this layer here. Now, because it's on an angle, it looks very awkward to slice. So before I begin to slice, I'm just going to rotate this back to zero degrees. And then let's grab our gray rectangle and I'm going to change the operation of my gray rectangle. Right now you can't see through the gray rectangle. It is a solid color. So we're going to go up to operation and I'm just going to change this to guide. And now I can drag this guide layer wherever I want and I can see underneath and see exactly what I'm cutting. Now this layer is going behind my square image. So all I have to do to get on top is go to arrange and we're going to bring this layer to the front. So I'm going to slice our yellow square into two sections here. If we put our template over top, you can see that that is possible. Before I do that, I'm just going to duplicate my guide so that I can reuse it again. So I'm just going to go up to the top and press duplicate. And I'm going to set this second guide just aside for now. So let's grab that first guide and we're going to put it over top of the square. And then I'm going to select the square and our guide layer. So if you see in the layers panel here, I've got our square guide selected and I got the yellow square selected. And now we're going to just go down to the bottom and we're going to click on slice. And now we can get rid of our guidelines here. So I'm going to delete this guide layer here and our square has been broken up in two. So I'm going to move that aside and here's our second guide layer. I'm going to delete that. And our yellow square is now in two halves. So if you go back to the layers panel, you'll notice we no longer have that warning symbol. So when we cut this image out, we're going to be putting it together as a puzzle later on after it's been cut out. So now we're going to do the same thing to our other layers. So let's grab our black square here. Again, I'm going to rotate this back to zero degrees, just a little easier to slice. And I'm going to use our guide layer once again to help slice this layer. But first I'm going to duplicate my guide again because I'll be needing it again for the kangaroo. 
So I'm going to press duplicate and put this one aside and we're going to work with our black square and our guide layer. So you can decide wherever you want that cut line to be. It could be off to the side so it's different than the cut line on our orange layer or you can have it right in the middle. It's really up to you. So I'm going to have mine cut about right here. So I'm going to select both our layers again, the guide layer and our square, go to the bottom right and press slice. And now I'm going to delete those guide layers that I no longer need. And then I can take our two slice pieces and we're just going to place them over top over here just so we can see them for now and they're out of the way. And you'll notice again in the layers panel that we're able to cut these out. We do not have a warning symbol. Now we just need to do this kangaroo as you can see in our layers panel, this kangaroo is too big to cut out. So we're going to grab that guide layer again and decide where you want to slice the kangaroo. So you could slice it vertically like this right in between. If you wanted to, you could rotate your guide layer 90 degrees and you could slice them a different way. If I did it this way, I'd just be cutting off the legs and that looks like that would actually work really well. So now I'm going to select my kangaroo and our guide layer. We're going to slice those at the bottom right. We're going to delete our guide layer. And now we have our two pieces of our kangaroo. And these feet are actually going to cut out separately as there's nothing attaching these feet to each other. So we actually have three pieces of the kangaroo. We have the top half and then two feet that are going to cut out. And if you go over to our layers panel, we have no warning symbols anymore. So we can go ahead and press make it. And at the top here, it's just telling us that we need to use our large mat for this project. You don't wanna be using your 12 by 12 mat, make sure you have a 12 by 24 mat. And if you scroll down here, you'll see all our different layers that we are going to be cutting out. We have five different mats we're cutting out. Now on this first page here, I notice the feet are off to the side. I'm just going to put these feet right inside here so that I'm wasting less cardstock and I can save my leftover cardstock on the side here. So I'm going to go ahead and press continue and I'm going to be selecting medium cardstock for my black layer. But for our my yellow layer, I think I may be using poster board, so I may have to go back in and change my material setting to poster board. So to do that, all you'd have to do is go to browse materials and type in poster, and you can select poster board right here. But my first few layers, I am doing cardstock, so I'm just going to select medium cardstock and we'll get our pieces cut out. So I have my large 12 by 24 inch mat here and I have two sheets of 12 by 12 cardstock. Now you can buy 12 by 24 inch cardstock. I don't have any on hand and I need to get this project done. So I'm just using two sheets of 12 by 12. So I'm going to start at the top and just line my cardstock up with that top line there so that it's on straight. And then I'm just going to grab my second piece of cardstock and line that up with the first piece, having them make sure they're uh, touching nice and snugly together. And I'm going to lay that down. And to keep these two pieces from separating, I am just using some masking tape and I'm going to put it along the line here that's connecting the two. So we're just going to tape this down. We will not be removing this tape from our cardstock. This is going to be the back of the image, so it's not going to really matter and no one's going to be looking at this piece of masking tape. Once I have my tape on, I like to go over my mat with a brayer. This just really helps the cardstock stick better to the mat. If you have a newer mat, you don't have to worry about it. This mat's kind of getting a little old and there's a lot of stuff kind of stuck on it. So I'm just using my brayer here to make sure it's stuck on well. So I'm just going to turn my machine sideways here because I'm using the large mat. I use my heat press on the side just to keep my large mat up and from flopping all around. Another trick you can do is just slide a meter stick underneath your machine and that way your large mat is not draping off your table or if you're using a large table that works too. I just don't have one here in my craft room and so I'm just improvising here. Now when taking your cardstock off your mat, you wanna be very careful. You don't just wanna like rip it up like this because you are going to bend the cardstock and we wanna keep this as flat as possible. So we're going to flip our giant mat over here and we're just going to carefully peel our mat off the cardstock rather than the cardstock off the mat.
And so for our yellow background, I just cut a piece of poster board down to size to fit on our mats as I didn't have any yellow cardstock available to me. So this time I don't need to tape, but I will use my brayer to make sure that it's sticking on well. So I have my two yellow pieces here that I've cut out. So the first thing I'm going to do is just tape these two pieces together. So I'm going to line up my cardstock edges nice and straight, and then I'm just going to run masking tape along the edge. And again, this is going to be on the back, so no one's going to see that masking tape. So now my two pieces are taped together. So I'm just going to put this on top of my giant sheet of cardboard here. And I'm going to trace around my cardboard with the pencil. And then I'm just going to go outside to the garage and use my X-Acto knife to cut around the cardboard. And I'm not going to have the cardboard going over my design here. I want under, so when I trace it, I'm actually going to cut inside of the line. I'm doing this next piece here in the grass outside because I'm using spray tacky glue and I don't want to get it all over my craft room. I'm spraying the cardboard here with tacky spray and then I'm just laying the poster board right on top of the cardboard and I'm using my brayer to smooth it out. So we've got our bristle board now glued to our cardboard and now we have to put on our little square here. Now again, this is in two separate pieces. So before I put this on, I'm going to tape uh, these edges together and then I'm going to use my tape runner to put around the outside of it and then we're going to tape it on to the board. So you can use a tape runner or glue. I'm not really sure if you classify this as tape or glue, but this is what I'm using. I think I picked this up at the dollar store, but you can use whatever type of glue or tape that you want to. Now all we need to do is glue down our kangaroo and our sign is complete. I hope you enjoyed today's project. I'm sure the kids at Vacation Bubble Camp will love seeing their giant kangaroo sign, but keep in mind you can use this method for any type of project, whether you want to make some giant characters for a kid's birthday party or you want to come up with some decorations for a kid's room, wherever your imagination takes you. If you have any questions at all, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. And feel free to join me also on TikTok where I give lots of quick Cricut tips and tricks. I hope to see you on more crafting adventures.